Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Uh, is it snowy enough for you? Beautiful snow outside. All right, so how many of you grandparents have ever played the peekaboo game with your grandbabies? Yeah, you know that what I'm talking about, right? You, you, you hold a blanket or something in between you, your face and the baby's face, and then you go, peekaboo, and then you, cl- you, you, know, you, cl- you cover their eyes, and then it's peekaboo. And what you know, psychologists tell us that, that from zero to age two, um, children learn something that we call object permanence. That even though you can't see, you know, if I held something up between you and me, you know that I'm still here because of object permanence. And I wonder if we grow in that spiritually. That we know, even though we can't see God at work, we know that God is still there. Sometimes, We just have to seek Him when we can't find Him. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So, I'm going to pray. After I pray, we're going to sing a song in praise of God. And while we're singing, if you want to kind of fill in these center two sections, feel free because, you know, we're kind of a community here. So, uh, feel free to kind of gravitate to these two and, and we'll just worship the Lord. So, God, thank you so much for your many blessings. God, even... On a, on a snowy morning, uh, we see telltales of your beauty and your majesty and your power. So in these moments that we share together, God, pour out your Spirit on us that we might sense your presence here. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand as we worship Him this morning? Join me in our morning prayer. In these quiet moments this morning, dear Lord, we seek you. You have promised to meet us here, but more than that, we need you. Our broken lives are in need of healing touch. Only wounded hearts. Our wounded hearts are in need of the restoration that only you can bring. Our feeble minds are in need of revelation from you, our great teacher. 
our troubled souls are longing for the peace that only you can offer. As we seek you, let us find you. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and empower us to be more faithful followers of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. Perseverance in prayer. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are in with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it shall be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him?
Well, just a few announcements uh, this morning as we uh, continue to worship. First of all, thanks, choir. That was gorgeous. And thank you for being here. Um, I, I know it was a challenge um, for maybe many of you to get out. And um, so thanks for being here. And, and I just wanted to say a word about that um, because, you know, everybody has kind of a different take on, um, you know, protocol. Um, I live about 115 steps away from this church. So on a Sunday morning, if there's inclement weather, I'm going to be here. And uh, I'm not going to cancel. Now, everyone else could maybe not be able to make it in, but I'm going to be here. So um, I, I know that that's a big question. We're putting that on the website so everybody will know. And this may be our last big snow of the year. Um, so um, it may be almost moot. But I just want to throw that out there that um, we'll always be open. And, and the reason is, is because if somebody is visiting for the first Sunday and they show up and it's closed, I don't want them to find closed doors. I want them to find an open door, even if they find just the pastor. So, um, so that's going to be the, the protocol for that. And, um, and I, I just want to say thanks for, for being brave this morning and, and getting out. Uh, if you would sign the, the, uh, what, the Making Connection card and um, put that, just your name and those maybe that are with you today and um, when the offering plate comes by, you can drop this in the offering plate as usual. But if there are things that are going on in your life that you'd like us to know about, be praying about, uh, put those down because we pray about them every week. And, uh, and we're so thankful when you do that. Um, also, just a reminder, Wednesday nights through the, the um, Lenten season, we're meeting down the hall in the chapel uh, for a Wednesday night service. Um, this past Wednesday was our first one. It's kind of a preview, if you will, of the topic that we're going to be looking at uh, on Sunday. It pretty much ends up being a couple of different sermons, but around the same topic. And uh, I led some hymns with guitar, and, and we had a chance to pray together and, and dive into the Word. So if you want an informal setting uh, for worship, you're welcome to be part of that on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock in the chapel. Also, a new member class coming up Palm Sunday, March 29th, uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, from 2, it'll go from about 2 till 4. Uh, it won't go maybe all the way till 4, maybe 3.45 right in there. And um, it, again, this class is something that uh, is required to become a member, but it doesn't obligate anyone to become a member. So it's a great way to find out, you know, what's Charleston Wesley all about? What's the vision here? What What's the strategy? What are you doing? And, and it's a great chance to find out more about United Methodism and about this church specifically. So if you know any people that um, have talked about maybe wanting to become a member, if you go out these doors, um, there's a table set up there with a little sign-up sheet. And you can just sign up, let us know that you're, that you're interested in that new member class. That'll give me a sense uh, how many to prepare for. Um, and lastly, uh, if you look through the bulletin, you'll see that in, in the month of March, the mission focus is one great hour of sharing. Uh, if you've been around the, the United Methodist Church for any length of time, you know that we have something called UMCOR, and UMCOR is the agency that responds to national disasters all around the globe. And we always say when we talk about an UMCOR offering, 100% of what's given goes to relief. There's no overhead cost. So 100 pennies out of your dollar go to providing relief, which is awesome. One great hour of sharing provides coverage for the overhead of UMCOR. And so you'll hear more about that next week, but just wanted you to be aware of that. That's our mission focus um, for the month of March. And those are all the announcements. So um, let's come before the Lord, shall we? Gracious God, again, we are so thankful as we gather here this morning, that we have the privilege of coming into your presence. That we have the privilege of hearing from your Spirit again. That we have the privilege, Lord, of being together, side by side, as we worship you and seek your involvement in the life of this church. So Lord, this morning, we lift up Charleston Wesley to you. And we pray, God, that you would continue to empower and bless the ministries that are going on. 
God, that you would give us fresh vision and new insight into ways that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. God, when we watch the evening news, we are constantly reminded that we live in a broken and fallen and sinful world. And so, Lord, we just pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ all around this globe who today might be fearing for their very life because simply because they put their trust in You. They have claimed the name of Jesus and it puts them at risk. God, would You pour out Your Spirit and protect them and guard them? Would You raise up Your church, all of us everywhere, all around the globe, that we might be instruments of Your peace, instruments of compassion and mercy wherever we go. God, continue to pour out Your Spirit upon us now, even as we pray the prayer that Jesus Himself taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I don't see any uh, young friends with us today uh, for children's moments, but let's sing uh, these, the first and third stanza of I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light together. Let's sing that. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness sat all the night and the day are both alike. The land is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus. When we have run with patience the race, we shall know. great prayer to carry with you anywhere. Well, I want to invite the ushers to prepare for the morning offering, uh, to receive it. Uh, every week we have an opportunity to worship God through the giving of our tithes and our gifts and our offerings. And in essence, what we're doing is recognizing that God's blessed us immeasurably, and now we get to pass that blessing on. We get to pay that blessing forward. And so these gifts and offerings empower ministry uh, in this church and all around the world. So Lord, uh, we worship you as we bring you our tithes and gifts and offerings this morning in Jesus' name.
Lord, we do thank you for entrusting us to be stewards of what is yours. So we ask that you would receive these gifts and bless them, press them down, and multiply them to the overflowing that they would be a blessing to others in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, just a reminder also, there's um, one more announcement that I forgot to, to mention is that after second service, um, we're going to have, uh, I, I mentioned this last week, that we're going to vote on the selling of the parsonage. Um, it, the trustees have already worked through that and, and, and have already uh, done all the details, but our polity, uh, the way that we um, are structured as United Methodist Church, uh, requires us to do this vote. So if you'd like to be part of that, we're going to do that after second service uh, for those that are here. So you're welcome to be part of that um, uh, after second service today. Well, as we um, turn to God's Word this morning, let's uh, once more come to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, every time we open your Word, it is an opportunity to hear from you to invite your Holy Spirit to reveal something new and fresh to each one of us. And if we've learned anything about following Jesus, we've learned that it's never static, but it is dynamic. Always changing. Always growing. If we allow it and invite it. And so Lord, our heart's desire this morning is that you would Teach us something new of Yourself. Quicken our hearts and speak to our spirits, Lord, as, as we continue to strive to follow Christ in our daily living. Illuminate Your Word this morning, we pray. In Christ's holy name, Amen. Well, um, this we just started last week a new series looking at great invitations um, that have been extended to us by God. And our goal um, throughout the Lenten period really is to look at these invitations and how we can respond to them. Uh, some of the invitations that we face in life uh, are not very life-altering, right? I mean, you get invited to birthday parties and to baby showers and to anniversary celebrations. Those really aren't going to change your life. They're fun, Right? But they probably aren't going to change your life. But there are other invitations that are life-altering, right? The first time one of you popped the question or the invitation, will you marry me? Uh, that's an invitation, right? And if you pop that question, answering that invitation will literally change your life. You know, your boss says to you, will you take that new position in Phoenix? You answer that invitation, it's going to change your life. Especially if you're living in Maine, right? Moving halfway across the country to take a new position. God offers us invitations as well. And they, too, will change our lives if we allow them to. And that's, again, what we're looking at. Because here's what I've learned. The invitations that we say yes to and the invitations that we say no to will, to a large degree, determine the landscape of our lives, right? You're confronted with invitations all the time. The ones that you say yes to and the ones that you say no to will, in, to a large degree, determine the landscape of your life. And so again, this series is an invitation for us to look at some of the invitations that God is extending to us. And I believe um, they, too, will change our lives. Now, last week, we looked, about, we looked at the invitation that God extends to realign our lives. Left to our own self, we will choose self every time, right? And so God's invitation is, how about this? How about realign your life under me? so that I become an integral part of your life. In fact, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is a realignment that's necessary, right? To love the Lord with all of your heart, soul, and strength. And so this week, we're looking at the invitation.
to seek the Lord. God extends an invitation to you to seek God. Seek the Lord in your life, right? Now, when you were young, maybe you played hide-and-seek. I played hide-and-seek when I was young, right? And what do you do? You find the youngest kid that's not going to put up a fight. You say, okay, you're it. That's one way. Or you have some funky little rhyme that you would go, everyone puts the tip of their shoe in, and you'd go around on the tips of the shoe to, to weed out one by one. And finally, you know, you find someone that's it. And the person that's it covers their eyes and counts to 50 or to 100 while everyone else hides, right? And then after they reach 50, what do they say? There it is. Ready or not, here I come. And that kind of broadcasts to everyone in the neighborhood, okay, the search is on. And the seeker is seeking. We'd look in every possible corner. If we were seeking in the house, we'd look in every closet, under every bed, you know, in every laundry basket. If we're outside, behind every tree, behind every shrub. And we would continue that search until all were found. And then if the person who was it couldn't find everybody, what did they call out? Ali Ali Oxen Free. Exactly. Everybody, all right, I give up. I can't find you. So you can all come in um, for free. You know. And so we would all come in, usually with a little smug smirk on our face that we avoided being found, right? Now, just out of curiosity, how many of you preferred being it and seeking others? How many preferred hiding? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I'm going to do a little tally here this morning. How about you? Seeking? Hiding. Look at that. Yes. All right. See, that's my hunch. I think we like to hide. Well, I want to see if we can switch over to being seekers today. Seeking God in our daily lives. Have you ever felt like God was playing a game of hide and seek with you? Like maybe you wanted nothing more than to be in God's presence, but for whatever reason, the situation that you were going through, a heart condition maybe that you had spiritually, it just seemed like God was somehow absent. Have you ever walked through something like that? If you have, you know how difficult that can be. You know, we try to find Him, but we can't. David, in the Old Testament, he knew this feeling. In Psalm 13, verse 1, David says, How long, O Lord, will you hide your face from me? How long, God? How long am I going to feel like you're hiding your face from me? I know for me, there was a time uh, right after we had gone into the ministry. Uh, 1991, right, is when uh, I answered the call to ministry. I'm going into the ministry and Gene and I are going over to Blandonsville, Illinois. We had never even heard of Blandonsville, Illinois. In fact, Gina's graduating class was bigger than Blandonsville. The entire town of Blandonsville. You know, her graduating class was a thousand, and there were 750 people in Blandonsville. Here we are answering the call to ministry. I'm on my, let's see, I, I rededicated my life to the Lord at the age of 25 in April of 88. So I'm on year three as I go into the ministry, and my heart is like burning. You know, I, I just want to serve God, I want, I want to get closer to God, and, and all that whole thing. Well, about two years into it, now on year five, all of a sudden, one summer, I felt like God was nowhere to be found. I felt like inside, it was a spiritual wasteland, like a spiritual desert. And I didn't really know what to make of it. I don't know if you've ever been through something like that. If you have, it's a funky feeling, right? Because all I had known for the last five years was, oh my gosh! I didn't know I could feel this close to God. But then here I am going through this 
spiritual wasteland going, God, I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel like reading scripture because I, I'm just reading words. It feels so empty. And it was during that time that I discovered, all right, Bob, you don't feel like worshiping? Worship anyway. You don't feel like reading scripture? Read scripture anyway. You know, and, and fortunately I got through that really dry spell. But if you've ever been there, it's not a good feeling. But here's the thing, even though there are times when we feel that God is absent, God does not hide from us. God never hides from us. God's not off in the distance hiding behind everything in hopes that we won't find Him. In fact, God invites us to seek Him, and that's the invitation that He's extended to all of us. And this is a pretty critical deal for all of us, because here's what I know. You will never drift into a deeper relationship with God. Make sense? We don't just drift into a deeper relationship with God. We don't just say to God sometime, Hey, God, I believe you're real, so... You know, if anything changes, let me know. You know, we're, we're not going to drift into a deeper relationship. We don't put our spiritual life on autopilot and expect to go deeper in Christ. It takes attention. It takes intention. And it takes action. And it takes perseverance, right? To grow in our relationship with God. Now, you would think that we would just do this naturally. That God would show up one day and say, hey, I'm real. And we go, oh, okay. And then be blown away by that, right? But in fact, in Romans uh, chapter 3, we find here's the problem. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. Paul says to the church in Rome, this is the problem. There's no one that seeks God. It, it's not automatic. Right? I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy that never seeks God. I don't want that to be said of me. You know, Bob, you just never sought me. So, what does it mean to seek? Right? If we're going to talk about seek, what does it mean to seek? Seeking, if you look at the biblical words for seek, there are a few things. One is um, to, to strive after, right? We say things like, um, I'm seeking fame. I'm seeking fortune. I'm seeking a new uh, position somewhere, right? It's to strive after something. It also means to seek out, like we seek out the truth in a matter, you know? Um, our daughter was in a little fender bender and uh, there was a, a, a kid at school that kind of crunched into the car. We were seeking after the truth, right? Of what happened. Uh, I know what my daughter said I know, and I'm hearing what he's saying, but they're, they're just not like adding up. And so we seek after the truth in a situation. Um, also, the biblical understanding of seeking is to inquire of, you know, you, if you want to seek advice from someone, you're inquiring for advice, right? What we find is that when we begin to seek God in these ways, some amazing things begin to happen. When you seek God, you will find God. Say that with me. When we seek God, we find God. Now think of this. This is a given. If you seek me, you will find me. God says multiple times throughout Scripture. In Jeremiah 29, 13, He says, If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. And in our Gospel lesson today from Luke, whoever asks, it's going to be answered. Whoever knocks, the door is going to be opened. Whoever seeks, you're going to find. Hebrews 11.6 tells us that God even rewards those who seek Him. Right? Now with those kinds of promises, you'd think that we would be so organized around seeking God every day of our lives 
that we'd have difficulty finding time for family and work and recreation because with these kinds of promises the God of the universe is saying to you if you seek me you will find me I'm not playing hide and seek with you you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart what are the things that you'll inquire or you'll search for well sometimes you'll seek out provision you'll seek out God providing something for you because you need something in your life maybe it's a need spiritually maybe it's a need physically but we seek out provisions from God we seek out power from God right God I feel powerless to confront what I'm facing right now God would you give me the strength to get through what I'm facing I need your power I need your strength I'm seeking it sometimes we even seek out um, promises the promises that God's given us right Lord I feel like giving up much like that time that I experienced in Blandonsville you know when I just felt like God was somehow absent um, Lord you know I, I need you to remind me of your promises that promise that says you will never leave me and never forsake me I need to be reminded of that that, that promise, Lord, that you gave me that when I pass through the waters, they're not going to oversweep me. When I pass through the fire, I'm not going to be burned. God, I need to be reminded of that. That, that thing that you said, God, that can a mother forget her baby, yet even if that's possible, I will never forget you. God, would you just remind me of that promise right now? Sometimes we seek God to remind us of the promises that he's already given us. And sometimes we just need to seek out His presence. You know, God, I just need to know you're here. I need to know you're with me. I need to know I'm not alone. Psalm 34.10 says, Even strong lions go without and they get hungry. But those who seek the Lord, they lack no good thing. Whenever we seek the Lord, we're in a great position whether we feel God's presence or not. And so I'm just curious. Do you seek God? Have you responded to God's invitation to seek Him? Because what I've discovered is that we can seek God in a variety of circumstances all across the board of life, right? We can seek God in our home in conversations that we're having with our significant other, with our spouses, with our children, with the, with the people that are around us. When we seek God in our relationships, it's almost like having a two-track mind. The one track is life as it's unfolding before us. The second track is to say, God, would you be present in this conversation? God, would you, it seems like we're at an impasse here. Um, God, would you pour out your spirit? Would you give us insight? Would you give us wisdom? And we seek God even in the relationships that we're a part of. Maybe it's in the way you deal with public, you know, in your work, at your job. God, how might I be a witness to your grace today? God, how might I be a, a, a shining light, a testimony of your compassion. I'm seeking to know. And I want to make that connection so that others can know your grace through me. With relationships, friendships, no matter where we are, we can seek God. And so I just want to remind you today that God has offered an invitation for you to seek Him. And with that invitation comes a promise. Look at that Hebrews 11.6 again. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and God rewards those who earnestly seek Him. With the invitation comes a promise. If you seek me, you're going to find me. I'm not playing hide and seek. I want you to find me. And when we do, 
we discover God's presence in a very powerful way. And we develop a way of doing life, seeking God in our circumstances, seeking God in our relationships, seeking God in our planning, seeking God right now. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you today for this gentle reminder that you've invited each one of us to seek you. And Lord, we pray that you would remind each one of us of your promises. God, you know where every person is in this room today. The things that they're facing, their needs, their deepest needs, their desires. But Lord, we just hear afresh this invitation to seek you and the promise that if we seek you, we will find you. So God, we pray that you would go with us this week. Help us to have a two-track mind in our daily living, seeking you as we live each moment. And we ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, um, this is very fitting that we come to this table, right? Um, because this is a weekly reminder. As often as it's given, it's an opportunity to remember what Christ has done on our behalf. And so we remember that it was on the very night that Jesus was betrayed by his own. And in Luke's gospel, um, it says that you know Jesus invited his friends to this room. And Luke says, Jesus looked at them and he said, I have longed to share this meal with you. And so Jesus took bread, which was at every meal, and this time he gave thanks for it, which was the custom at every meal to give thanks to the food that was provided. And Jesus gave thanks for the bread. But this time, after the blessing, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. So take and eat, all of you, and as often as you eat it, remember me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks for it. But this time he said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. So take and drink, all of you, and as often as you drink it, remember me. The Apostle Paul reminds us that as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we're really proclaiming the Lord's life, death, and resurrection. And in a beautiful way, we are participating in the life, the ministry, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. So, Father, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can be, for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until that great and glorious day, God, when You return for Your church and our faith will become sight. We pray that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to invite those who are helping to serve um, to come forward. And as you're coming forward, Gina will um, serve you and um, and, and as they're coming forward, I'll explain just a little of how we celebrate communion. Um, and then the choir is going to be, you can come around and receive first. Um, but, in, you know, we, we understand that this is not a United Methodist table, even though it's in a United Methodist church. We understand this to be the Lord's table. And all are welcome at the Lord's table who seek to be in a relationship with God through Christ. So if that's you today, if, if you are simply seeking to be in a relationship with God through Christ, please know you are welcome to receive these elements. We take by intinction, so when you come forward, you get a little piece of bread, dip a small corner of the, of the bread in the cup, and in essence you're receiving uh, both elements simultaneously. The, the section over on that aisle will be gluten-free. Um, and so if you would like gluten-free dedicated cup and bread, that'll be over on this aisle. Um, and 
we're, we're not, there's not a lot of us, so, you know, if you guys want to split and go down, you go down to the nearest person uh, as you're led. Uh, but please know, this is God's gift offered to you. It's free to you. It costs Jesus everything because of his great love for you. So as you come, let's celebrate um, God's goodness, and then we'll sing uh, a hymn. Gracious Lord, I'm reminded of the disciples realizing what they didn't have. And your response to them was, you don't have because you haven't asked. So Lord, we seek you today, asking for your Spirit to fill us. Fill us to the overflowing 
so that grace and love and mercy and compassion would fill every word and action of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for this holy mystery in which you reveal yourself to us. We pray now that you would use us for the furthering of your kingdom on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's stand and close by singing, Seek Ye First. If you seek, you will find. So go to seek God in your daily living and pray that God would keep your eyes open to see all the movements of His Spirit. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.